Hi, in this video we'll be talking about fractions. We'll make use of the fractions module, so let's import it now. From fractions, import all. The most important function in this module is fraction, which is used to create fractions. Let's say we want to create the fraction 3 quarters, so 3 over 4. We can do it in a couple of ways using the fraction method. So the easiest way to do it is to pass the numerator and the denominator to the fraction method, like so. Here we have our numerator and our denominator. Yeah. And this is our fraction. So the first argument is the numerator and the second argument is the denominator. 3 over 4, 3 quarters. We can also pass the decimal value, like so. 0 0.75. And this results in the same fraction. We can also pass a string, like so. And we also get a fraction. We can also use the built-in float method as integer ratio, which returns a tuple. Then we have to add an asterisk, which expands the tuple into its individual elements. So, let's have a look. Fraction. And here... We need an asterisk, and now we need a float, 0 0.75, and the method as integer ratio. And the result is, again, the fraction, 3 quarters. The default value of the denominator is 1. So, fraction with just one argument, 4, is the same as fraction with 4 as the numerator and 1 with the denominator because this is the default value. We can skip it. And this results in true because this is exactly the same as this. The default value of the numerator is 0. So if we don't pass any arguments to the fraction method, the default value of the numerator is 0. So, this is exactly the same as fraction with 0 as the numerator and any value as the denominator, for example, 1, or, for example, 3, or whatever. This is all true because this means 0 divided by 1, which is 0, 0 divided by 3, which is 0. And this is also true. Fraction without any arguments equals zero. Because this is a fraction with a numerator equal to zero, and any fraction with a numerator equal to zero, provided the denominator is not equal to zero, gives us zero. You can use fractions in arithmetic operations. For example, three-fifths plus one fifth equals four fifths or multiplication two over seven times seven over two equals one or one over one if you want to represent it as a fraction. And here is something more complicated. 49 to the power of, and now in the exponent, we're going to have 1 over 2, a half. So we need to type 1 and 2. As you know, a number raised to the power of 1 over 2 is equal to the square root of this number. So the result is 7. And some more examples. A equals fraction two thirds. B equals five six. Now, 
a plus b, a minus b, a times b, a divided by b, a divided by b. Here using true division and here using floor division. And here are the results of adding, subtracting, multiplying and dividing using true division and floor division of these two fractions. In the last example we have two kinds of division. True division with a single slash and floor division with a double slash. The difference is that true division returns a float and floor division truncates the result down to the nearest integer number. If you want to learn more about the two division operators, you can watch my video True Division versus Floor Division. And now back to our example. In floor division, the result which we would obtain using true division, so this result, is truncated down to the nearest integer. Well, as this number 4 over 5 is less than 1 but more than 0, so if we truncate it down to the nearest integer, the nearest integer is 0, hence this result. A fraction itself can be used as a numerator or denominator. Have a look. Fraction. And now as the numerator we can use another fraction. And for example 3 fifths. And as the denominator we can for example use 2. So this means 3 over 5 in the numerator divided by 2. And the result is 3 over 10. Another example, fraction. And now the numerator is 5. And the denominator is another fraction. For example, 1 fifth. So this is 5 over 1 fifth. And the result is 25 or 25 over 1. And one more example, fraction. Now the numerator is a fraction, for example 2 thirds. And the denominator is also a fraction, for example 8 over 5. So this means 2 thirds over 8 fifths. And the result is 5 twelfths. If either the numerator or the denominator is a negative number, in the resulting fraction the numerator is negative. Have a look. Fraction. And now we have negative 1 and 5. In the result, the numerator is negative, but if the numerator is positive and the denominator is negative, in the result, still, the numerator is negative. It's also possible to use scientific notation in a string passed as the argument. Have a look at this fraction, and here we can use a string like so negative 5e3. So this is the same as negative 5 times 10 to the power of 3. 10 to the power of 3 is 1000, so it's negative 5000. Here we have it, negative 5000 over 1. And one more example, fraction. And here we have 3a minus 2. And this is the same as 3 times 10 to the power of negative 2. 10 to the power of negative 2 is 1 hundredth. So 3 hundredths. And this is the result, 3 hundredths. 
We can use the limit denominator method to obtain the closest fractional representation of a given float number, where the denominator is not greater than the max denominator passed as an argument to the function. So, suppose we have a number like this. a equals 1.54657. And now we want to represent this number as a fraction. But we want the denominator to be not greater than 5. So we can use it like so. Fraction. Now we pass a, which is our number, to the function. And now we use the limit denominator method. And we pass the max denominator value, which is 5. And here is the result, 3 over 2. So this means represent this number as a fraction and try to do it as close as possible, but the denominator should not be greater than 5. Here, the denominator is 2. And now, let's try to represent this number as a fraction but now we allow the denominator to be up to 10. So we can obtain a closer result, a more precise result. So we can use this, the up arrow, and here we change 5 to 10. And the result is 14 over 9. So this is a representation of this number 2 and now we allow the denominator to be not greater than 10. Here we have 9. This seems to be more precise than this, because both this and this are just approximations of this number. These are not exact values. And now let's use this method again, and let's pass 100,000. And here we get it. Now we allow the denominator to be up to 100,000. So this is what we get actually, 100,000. And now in this case, this value is exactly the same as this value. Okay, that's it for this video. If you like it, a thumbs up would be great. Also, make sure to subscribe for future videos. If you want to leave a comment or ask a question, you're welcome to do so. Thanks for watching.